Today's challenge, a cockapoo named Shelby. Oh, oh my gosh. He may look angelic, but his behavior is anything but. If we can't sort these issues out, Shelby will have to go. In West Sussex, Adrian and Amy have one very full house. Not only are they juggling the demands of five children, there's also Shelby, a cockapoo puppy who's like Jekyll and Hyde. Not only does Shelby leave a constant trail of destruction, Shelby is definitely an accident waiting to happen. But what often starts as a game soon becomes more serious. He has gone for the children. Like, they can be playing with him, and then the next minute he can go for him. <laughs> Though it's Adrian who's bearing the brunt. When I go near Amy, 90% of the time, Shelby will growl at me. He will try and leap out of Amy's arms. He will try and nip me, bite me. And this pooch really likes to sink his teeth in. Basically, he just doesn't want me around. But it's not the only way he's marking his territory. Shelby! He wheezes everywhere, up to eight times a day. <laughs> so while Adrian and Amy are thinking about baby number six... <laughs> I'm just stroking it. Shelby's antics are the ultimate passion killer. We would like to probably maybe have one more. We if need... we can get Shelby's behaviour yeah. under control. If we can't sort these issues out, Shelby will have to go. I can't wait to meet Shelby. He's showing some aggression, and that's quite uncommon in such a young dog. But he's living in a busy household, so I wonder if that's contributing to his behaviour. Though today, at least... Good morning, Hi. come in. This seven-month-old pup is putting his best paw forward. Who's this? This is Shelby. Hello, Shelby. Oh, hello, my dear. If your tail wags much faster, it's going to wag off. <laughs> it is. Oh. Oh, come on. What's wrong with this? <laughs> what, what's wrong with him? You'll see. You'll, You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> come on, then. To prove their point, all Adrian and Amy have to do is head for the sofa. I'll show you. I don't want you to get bitten, but I do want to see how he reacts to you. Ah! Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, you got me like that time. Oh, he did. For a cute little ball of fluff, that was really intense. Now he's just got the angry eyes with me. I didn't expect that hard a reaction. So that is surprising from a pup so young. But he yeah. means he, business. He means business, yeah. He's not messing around. No. No. Even more of a concern, the safety of their children. Oh. He has gone for the children a few times. Mm -hmm. He has shown aggression towards mm -hmm. them. Mm. Not all the time. No. Not as much as me, but he has mm. shown aggression. And you're thinking of having a sixth child? We were thinking about it, yes. After what I've just seen, it's not even safe for the kids that you have right now. No, I totally let agree. Let alone introducing another. I don't want you to go any closer. <laughs> Let's get you off the sofa yeah, and show me good more. To me. The cockapoo is a cross between the cocker spaniel and poodle. While they make great family pets, it can be a lottery when it comes to temperament. With poodles renowned for intelligence and the spaniel a working dog, cockapoos can require a shed load of both mental and physical stimulation. Though in Shelby's case, he's yet to even complete basic toilet training. He just goes whenever and wherever he likes. Seven, eight times a day. Wow. I mean, this whole rug is basically 
urine stains. Uh, what kind of toilet training did you do with Shelby? I'd always take him out first thing in the morning. OK. But not, not regular enough. OK. How do you toilet train your children? Sometimes just put them on the toilet, even if they don't need it. Right. Make sure they go. And so why didn't you do the same for your puppy? I don't know. OK. Be honest with me, how frustrating is this for you? It's incredibly frustrating. Mm. He just did it this morning and I filmed it for you so that you can see. Wow. Urinating on the floor is one thing. Urinating in the bed where you sleep is quite another. Mm -hmm. We have to sort this out and sort this out now. But it's not just Shelby Victoria wants to observe. There's his seven housemates as well. I'm starting to see just how busy this house is now and how difficult it is to manage their five children and their dog. Take the bike over there, please. No, I don't want him to bite you. This environment is stressful for Shelby. He just doesn't know where to put himself. In desperate need of a calm space Whoa, and basic Shelby. training, this is a dog completely overwhelmed. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Shelves. It worries me. Are they really going to be able to have time for Shelby? To really transform this cockapoo's behaviour, Amy and Adrian need to change theirs as well. And that takes commitment. I think that you are great at giving love, but there's been very little direction for this puppy to actually know how to act, where to toilet. You took on more than you can handle. And the dog, as well as you, is suffering as a result. Dogs do what dogs do, pee and poo everywhere unless you teach them. The other thing they do is protect their resources. You, Amy, are a resource. You provide comfort, you provide safety, you provide love. Meanwhile, Shelby sees Adrian as the person always telling him off. Shelby, jump. Which is why there's a lack of trust. That's what he's doing. So Shelby is protecting you. It's a wake up call, eh? Yeah, just, just we didn't realise today, did we? I know. Speechless. It, what happens if we can't resolve Shelby's issues? then we'll possibly have to think about rehoming him, won't we? Mm. Okay. I know you're getting a little upset. I am going to work as hard as I can to help you so that Shelby can stay within your family. If you don't put the commitment that this dog needs, it will not work. But first, to understand the impact a lack of structure is having on Shelby, Victoria wants to play a game. I put various objects around the garden. All Adrian and Amy have to do is guess what needs to be done with each one. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> no! Ah! Oh. Yeah, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And they're getting it all wrong. <laughs> it's an epic fail, and here's why. There are no rules at all. <laughs> and the reason why we're doing this game is to give you a window into Shelby's world. There's no structure, no boundaries, and how unnerving and odd does that feel? Very. Very. <laughs> but now, after seven months of not-so-subtle hints, Shelby's training can finally begin. The first challenge... Oh, oh my gosh. ...his aggressive behaviour towards Adrian. It's your approach that as soon as he sees you, he freezes. And if you continue approaching, then he launches. And now we have to show you're no threat. You're going to watch how I do this, OK? Yeah, OK. okay. Come into the room. Hey, Shelby. Drop some chicken. 
and go out. Good. When he comes to you, tell him good boy. If you can call him and get him back on the sofa. Shelby. Good boy. Yes. Now we're going to do that again. So I'll go out. This time I'm going to come a little bit closer. Okay. And I'm going to retreat. If you get him back up. And the last thing you're going to do. Here, go get that. Good. And while Shelby plays with the toy, Adrian finally gets his spot on the sofa. And the reason he's got an activity that he can do, that you gave him to do, right. it's not a distraction. It's actually saying your entrance is a positive thing. Yeah. So we're cutting out that emotion of... Right. Yeah. We're literally just changing the picture. Complete, 180. But now comes the tough part. Do you think you can do this? Um, I'll give it a go, but he, we've seen the way he is with me and um, I'm not holding my breath. That's it, nice and purposeful. Hi, Shelby. Drop the forward and out. Good. Ooh. Well done. That was beautiful. Now we're going to do it again. Come in a little bit closer this time. Hi, Shelby. OK, good. Drop. Boy. Nice. Now comes the all-important third approach. All right, this time you're going to throw the toy a little bit towards me. Yep. Good. Shelby, here we go. Okay, go sit next to Amy. Good boy, good boy, Shelby. Much to everyone's relief, Shelby's feeling the love. Look at snuggles again. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel there's light at the end of the tunnel. It'd be great with, for Shelby mm. to have a relationship with other people in the house other than just me. The trust that me and Shelby have lost, we will be able to rebuild it and we will become good friends again. To rebuild trust with a dog that's unconfident around you, start by being kind and try to understand their point of view. It's also crucial to have routine, like a daily walk. Not only does it create a bond, but it relieves stress and anxiety. And above all, good behaviour should be rewarded. As for Shelby's transformation, next on Victoria's hit list is Weegate. Shelby's toileting in the house seven to eight times a day. Yeah. Urination and defecation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, both. And this has to stop. So I'm going to give you and Shelby, a personalised toilet training schedule. At first, it might be a little bit overwhelming, but if you stick to it, you're going to have a dog that doesn't toilet in the house anymore. Fantastic. Kicking off at 6am, Adrian and Amy need to think of Shelby like a toddler, scheduling food, play, and up to eight toilet breaks a day. So, the headlines are, you stick to the schedule. Yeah and you take him out when it's his time to toilet and you wait outside until he does it. As he does it, you say, go toilet. Tell him, good boy. So we just wait till he actually goes, whether it be five minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah, 20 minutes, you're out here and you're like, he still hasn't gone. OK, bring him back in, supervise him. Yeah. When you see him sniffing around... Take him back out. Take him back out again. Right. But he never, ever has the run of the house. Right. And he should never be going upstairs until it's time for him to go to sleep. OK. How does this sound to you? Really good. It sounds a lot, but I'm sure once we get into a routine, it'll probably give us more time because we won't be spending so much time clearing up indoors. That's exactly it. No more pea-stained carpets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no more. To prove just how effective this approach can be, Victoria's taking charge of the 115 post-lunch toilet break. Outside. Tell him good boy. Good boy. Yeah. You bring him outside and then you wait for him just to go and then when he's in the action of going, you say... 
toilet. Toilet. Calmly. And then when he's done, good boy. That is going to make a dramatic change to our lives. Um, everyone's lives, the kids, ours. It's going to be brilliant. The house will smell nice again. <laughs> it's really good to be able to toilet correctly. I can't believe that he just peed outside that easily. It's brilliant. Well done, Shelves. To make Shelby's transformation complete, there's one last thing for Victoria to tackle. Take the bike over there, please. No, no, no. Living in a high-stress environment with lots of activity, he needs a child-free zone to recover. With five children, your household is understandably very busy. In order to give Shelby a kind of bolt hole, an escape, I want to make crate time just a little bit more comfortable. Okay. I actually really like where you've put his crate because it's a little bit removed, but it's not isolated, mm -hmm. so he can still see the family, even when he, when he wants to take himself off for some quiet time. It's your job to make this a welcoming place. That means this crate is never used as a punishment. Have you ever dragged him in here when you've been angry with him? At times, for example, when he's gone for Adrian, we'd then put him in the crate okay. to try and calm him down. Right. That doesn't happen again. The crate also requires a quick makeover, starting with a blanket for privacy. With his bed in there, this does create a dark space. And it's, it's warmth, it's enclosed, it's calming and then a chew toy when he goes in there. And now you've created a den. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Oh. When you've just had enough and you need him just to have a bit of quiet time, go, Shelby, use every ounce of just that you can and put him in here with a few treats and this crate will always be his safe zone, okay? Mm -hmm. With his training underway and a pimped up crate, Shelby's looking more angelic by the second. If you put the time and the work into Shelby and you make him really one of your main priorities along with your lovely family, you are going to reap the rewards. And remember, he's now coming into adolescence. So yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. All right, you, you take care. Bye, Bye, see you. Bye. The problems weren't just Shelby, they were us as well, which we've really taken on board. It's important for us to fix Shelby's behaviour because we want him to stay as part of the family. We adore him yeah. and want him to be happy with us. Hey, Shelby. It's a good boy. Good boy. Shelby toilet. Over the next few weeks, Adrian and Amy put the techniques Victoria's shown them into action. along with his rigorous schedule, which the kids are helping with too. Shelby's most definitely turning into the family dog that we yeah. wanted. It's a lot calmer now. This is a different dog. Yeah. It's, it's changed our lives really, hasn't it, so oh, far? absolutely. Good boy. Even better, his toileting skills are now a perfect 10. With us giving Shelby just that extra little bit of attention, it's really improved his behaviour, yeah, isn't it? really improved it. He's staying. For good. And with Shelby sorted, plans for baby number six are back on. 100%, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. that's on the right track, so are we. I'm so pleased with the progress that Shelby is making, and it just goes to show that having clear and consistent training makes the whole world of difference. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.